Welcome everyone to the city space. We're so happy that you can uh, join us for one of the LA Art Show Gallerist Talks presented by City here in the city space on the LA Art Show floor. Um, we're thrilled to have Beatriz Esquera from Beatriz Esquera Art in, from Colombia, um, Bogota, Colombia, um, with us here on the stage. And she's going to share with us about some of her wonderful artists. We have work by some of them here in this space. We're glad to see a large collection of people here. Thank you everyone for coming again. So Beatriz is passionate about her country of origin, Colombia, and the artists that she works with who happen to all be Colombian. Colombian in origin, but perhaps living in other parts of the world. Um, so very excited about that. We have many of the artworks in the space, as my colleague Mary Linda has said, we have the work of Pablo Arazola. You're seeing an example there on the screen. There are a few pieces this of is, his on the yeah. back wall there and also over there, this paper is, pieces. Oh, sorry, this is Teresa Curea. She's behind you, yeah. right over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we have Max Steven Grossman. You see here on the wall to the left, Pedro Ruiz. We have two small pieces. pieces of hers, of his, on the um, end cap, as you're coming into the space from the other side. Armando Castro Uribe, also on the outside wall over there, and a very exciting artist, also by the name of Mario Arroyave. Yes, and that How piece is on the <laughs> end wall over there as well. We will be speaking more about each of the artists, but we wanted you to have a chance to see the works in the space as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, Beatriz, why only Colombian artists? Well, first I want to thank you for having me. Uh -huh. So, and I want to say hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for coming and listening. Uh, why Colombian artists? Um, I am from Colombia. I live there. And uh, I believe in my country. We are a country of, uh, of creativity, of resilience, of uh, rich historical background, rich geographical um, elements. Uh, so all these things combined make for wonderful stories. And we have artists that tell fantastic stories. Not only do they tell fantastic stories, they have amazing skill, and they are poetic. Uh, so I love that. I believe in that. And that is why I promote them, and I promote them with such passion and enthusiasm. <laughs> yes, and that is evident uh, <laughs> when you speak about your artist's work, that passion, and that commitment um, Thank to, you. To, that, to their work. So there are many themes um, that are central, we found, to the reality of existing in the 21st century. A lot of them having to do with you know, socio-political themes and context. And a lot of the work that we saw uh, that your artists have done relate in some way. They're, they're saying something about the state of human affairs in the world or the state of the planet. Or talk a little bit about, if you could, what some of your artists are thinking about or saying through their work in regards to some of these themes. Okay, well, now that we have Max Steven Grossman in the background, he is the artist of the uh, Antarctica landscape right here. So he is addressing global warming, for example. And uh, in his work, this is a, he's a photographer, a constructed photography right here. It's, he made it. It's not real, but it looks real. And it's addressing, of course, global warming. Uh, the green will take over the ice, but he also um, addresses the fact that maybe in so many thousands of years, the ice will again take over the green. Uh, we, in our lifetime, will never see that because things happen so slowly, but he is talking about a cycle that is evident always in our world. And right now we're going through global warming, but maybe in the future, it'll return to the ice age. Who knows? <laughs> It's wonderful. I love um, how uh, meticulously and beautifully he um, uh, does the digital um, yes, yes. layering. He, he is also addressing 
always in his works because he has different series. He does uh, these constructed libraries as well. They're called bookscapes. But they all address the issue of extinction. Books are going extinct. Uh, the ice is going extinct. So that is a, a central theme for Max Stephen Grossman in his work. Thank you. That's Max Stephen Grossman. Yes. <laughs> and is he living in Colombia? No, he lives in the United States. Ah, yes, where, he where is he? In the He's States. in Florida. Oh, OK. Oh, in yes. Florida. Yes. Very good. Yep. Very Wonderful. good. And, and our next artist, uh, Armando Castro Uribe. Share with us what he's thinking about the environment. Right. So he also addresses um, recycling, so contamination, recycling, pollution. Uh, he uses always recycled materials uh, that have defects, of course, to do his meticulous, beautiful, skillful drawings. Um, he uses the defects on the materials to incorporate them in his compositions. And he also has a way of composing mostly aerial compositions, like the, the image we saw before, if we can go back one, uh, to call to attention because these are tiny little works sometimes and tiny little figures. But when you see those aerial compositions, you kind of zoom in and you pay attention, not only to the recycling issue, but also to humanity's daily life. Yes, he's a master draftsman. Master draftsman, draftsman right? yes. Yeah. And is most of his work then small scale? Yes, most of it is small scale. I mean, the biggest, it's mostly atmospheric. So he could have a very big, uh, cardboard or MDF, but very small composition. I mean, it's it's a great. Uh, he manages empty space very well. Yes, beautifully. Yes. In, in this image here, what are we seeing? Uh, this is particle board MDF. Okay, but if you could go back one. And please. the the other one is the cardboard, the one back we just saw, right. the beach scene. Is this a broom? What is at the top of the? The top image? is a. See, right. It's a dog. Oh, it's a dog. I'm so sorry on the screen. Maybe I need my it's glasses. It's a dog. <laughs> my apologies. Okay, so, I mean, that this changes. Is just, this is just a normal scene, everyday scene from the street, whatever, and he just brings it to attention yeah. with these beautiful renderings. Very good. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's Thought okay. it was a broom or something. And a tree. Okay. This looks like the, it's interesting, a tree is such a, a parallel for the planet, right? Yes, totally. So, you know, I mean, you could make up your own story for this, but the tree is central to this composition, yeah. to the recycling, to a reference, to the material, paper, cardboard, uh, wood, you know, yeah. it's, it's key. Yeah, very good. Very good. And then we have Pedro, Pedro Ruiz. Ruiz. Well, yes, exciting work. Yes, Pedro Reese is one of Colombia's most important artists today. Uh, he has, his, his work addresses social and political issues that affect not only Colombia, but worldwide, and I will discuss a little bit more of that. Um, but he does it in a very subtle and poetic manner. So when you look at his work, you're, you're gonna find that it's beautiful, and you'll say, oh, it's beautiful and very well done. But when you start discovering what it's about, it's just very impacting. Hmm. So he has had several main series in his work. And I'm going to begin by the first one, which is called Love is in the Air. And I don't know if we have an image of that. You uh, don't. I, you don't. don't. OK, but that's OK. Love is in the Air was a series that he did about spraying narco fields. Of course, Columbia, narco fields, we have that. Um, but when you spray narco fields, and they, these were these landscapes with little planes spraying, when you have that, you are, uh, yes, destroying the narco field, of course, that's wonderful, but at the same time, you're destroying nature because that spray destroys the nature around it. So he is always about nature conservation deep down. He can have different series with different topics, but they all refer in some way to nature conservation. So that was Love is in the Air. And, and it seems that his work also, it's always very much about the human presence and... In, yes, in and then, for example, we're, we're, we're looking at these images here, and then you will see another series which is called Displacements, which is a worldwide phenomenon. You have a little 
a canoe with a person carrying something. Um, we have displacement in Colombia due to war, guerrilla warfare, but it's a world phenomenon. When you are displaced, you take with you to wherever you're going, in your boat or where, whatever vehicle you're using, your life, your culture, your nature, your beliefs, your everything to wherever you're going. And so uh, Pedro addresses this very beautifully and poetically, but it's a human drama and it happens all over the world. Are, is displacement the theme under which the two that are at the end of the Those are there? displacements because okay. later on he did a series called Gold where it's more of a positive message. Um, he decided that he would bring out the gold of his country and share it with the rest of the world. So when the background is gold, it, it belongs to that series and the canoe is a vessel of sharing everything that we love about Colombia. Very good. So, yeah. And uh, he, he, he was knighted by the French government. Yes, he was knighted by the French government and he is a UNICEF ambassador because he works with social, uh, he has social projects and works with uh, indigenous communities and uh, other Colombian communities because he, he wants these communities to bring out the gold. Sometimes indigenous communities, uh, I mean other communities, they're not proud of their culture. And so his work is to bring out that gold, and he does these, uh, how do you call those, uh, like, um, forget the word. What's the word in like, Spanish? I mean, it's, uh, workshops. He does workshops. Yeah. He does workshops with these people, and that is the whole point. Be proud of your culture. Be, share it with the rest of the world, uh, which is a really important job. Yes, because so, so many of those cultures have not been honored and have been, um, you know, Maybe have been made to feel, that's right, and made to feel lesser than, and so it's beautiful. I or mean, maybe they yeah. don't, the government doesn't pay attention to them. Right. right. So his latest uh, project is this indigenous community in the eastern plains of Colombia. They are nomads, and it's 10 communities living in a very small area of land, um, and, uh, and they, used, they used to have thousands of, of, of hectares of land. And uh, they, can't, they used to be nomads is because if you, do, if you, if you, if you tire the land when you're, when you're working it, uh, then it doesn't... It doesn't produce. It doesn't okay. become fertile. It, it, yes. The fertility yes. exactly. is removed. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Cello. Yes, um, so he's working with these communities to empower them and teach them how to communicate with the government so that they can work to get their land back. And get a voice. Get and, a voice back. Yes, and get their voice back. So, and bring out the best that they have to get their, their land back. Well, and, and the thing is, is we are deprived not having what they have to share. And so, right, I mean, exactly. And that's the they indigenous also have communities around the world. Millen, they also have ancient knowledge of so many uh, things, right. plants, herbs. Uh, herbs, medicine, right. that it's being lost because they're going extinct. Right, right. Because they can't live without well, how, the land. How beautiful and how um, active and proactive he is. Yes, with, with very with much. His beliefs. I mean, a lot of artists, as we've been speaking of, are able to um, uh, e e express something that all of us may feel uh, and put it out there in a way that can be um, spoken of more fully, that can be um, shared and spoken of, but he's actually doing going a step further. He's and doing the work. He's doing the work. The physical That's work, amazing. too. Yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. It's very he's, exciting. He's an admirable, wonderful, poetic artist that we all love in Colombia. Thank you. And then we have Mario. Oh, is, and who is this gentleman this here? This is Pablo. Pablo? That's Pablo. Pablo I don't okay, sorry. He, he's got an interesting, an interesting topic, on, and you'll see him right over there uh, to the right. He uh, talks about our limited world. We live, because our brains limit us, really. We live in a limited world by our brains. We limit ourselves. Um, and the only way we can escape this limit is by altering our reality, altering our landscape, changing the things that we do one way and doing it another way. Um, he uses children, these are generic children, they don't exist, 
uh, to express this. And these children are living in a limited world and they're limited by the frame and the paper. They are conscious that they are drawn there and they are trapped in that frame. So they are, these children are manipulating the paper and manipulating you know, their surroundings in order to see if they can, ex they can escape their limited world. So it's a little bit humorous, but it's, I mean, this is real. It's real, that this is our reality. And so that's what these children are trying to do. Manipulate that paper, change it, and see if they get a new reality. Right, we are limited by the way we think, by our perceptions, exactly. by cultural... Oh, you know. totally. I mean, we are limited. Yes, yes. Well, and, and they are um, whimsical at the same time. They're yeah, so there's a little bit, yeah, they're, they're a little bit surrealist. Mm -hmm. I mean, here you see this, this girl, what you see there is, I would say, her have breath. The oh, are those the dots? I think yeah. so, yes. Yes. yes, where, where the, the paper is punctured. Again, you can see back there, it's there um, as well. The, the paper is punctured, and it, and it almost looks like stars or breath. I think or... it's her breath. It's coming from her mouth. Mm. And that is how she is having an impact. Oh, definitely. I mean, right. I, it's that paper manipulation that really makes this artwork different from a normal drawing. Yeah. You know? Very much so. And, you know, the thing that I think... Um, your ability to find these artists is amazing. And I, I, it feels like all of your <clears throat> artists have um, a depth of concept, meticulous nature in the way that they're working, and um, beautifully wrought. I mean, Thank you. That, Thank you, Mary That combination is, is wonderful Thank in you. all of them. Well, I feel fortunate to be able to represent them and, and show them because I just think that they have so much to, t to say. And in a, such a beautiful way, that's one of the values that I believe in in art. Um, beauty, permanence, skill. Um, I, I, I feel that art has to transcend in history and not get physically lost. Mm. So, you know, to do that, you have to have good quality Material. material right. Yes. The skill is important. And how do you find these artists? Do they come to well, you? Do you I, seek I, them out? Tell us a little bit about that I, story. I get, you know, there's all kinds of ways. Um, I, I, I receive portfolios, I think, every day in my email. I take a look at that. Um, I go to art fairs. I take a look at that. Other artists recommend. Uh, and uh, exhibitions, I mean. Or maybe somebody, some person that went to the gallery said, oh, I want you to look at this artist, which happened to my latest artist that, I'm, that I have. Um, a colleague said, you have to go see him. And I was like, I don't want to go see him. I have no time. And he insisted, and I ended up working with him. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Very good. Yeah. And so we have Mario Aroyave. Okay. Mario Aroyave, yes. He's a, these, these artists are all, except for Pedro, these are all mid-career artists or young, mid, young to mid. Mario Aroyave is very interesting because he combines spirituality with art and science. Um, in the artworks that we're exhibiting here at the fair, he is talking about quantum physics um, and how we are all uh, connected to the last atom and we are all part of one matter. We are all one. Um, but he puts these, his people, his, his little characters, in these white, empty spaces. So if you don't read about it, you might think, this is a mass of people, but they all look very lonely. Or, and it can make you uncomfortable, or you can think, oh, this is a beautiful mass of people, I love this, this is so minimalist. The whole point is to make you uncomfortable, and to, so that you reflect upon your presence among others in this world. And I, I would love you to talk about how he's creating these. Okay, so these, this is, he's got two light boxes and then he's got some prints. These are the light boxes and these are layered. So he, he Mario is a photographer, I forgot to say that. He does constructed photography. Um, and so these are photographs that he's taken and he's taken each little character and he has placed them in a light box and they're layered so you get perspective, so it has depth. Um, right there. You see the, there's layers in the light box. Right. And when you're saying they're layered, so they are on a, on, on a, on a translucent... They're printed um, on this 
transparent paper and then set on plexiglass and then you have the different layers, Beautiful. exactly. Yes, and, and that's where you get the depth. Is this, do you have this one here in your booth? On this the one floor? is in your booth, I think. Yes. No, this, no one, this is the light box, isn't Yes, it? this is the one that's in, in, yes. in our booth. We switched, that's why. Right. Okay, <laughs> all right, great. Great, but yes. these are wonderful pieces. Yes, they They're really, really are, and they do give such a sense of. Um, um, uh, I mean, it could it could make it could be peaceful or it could not, yes, depending right. on how you look at it. And that's his whole point. He wants you to feel kind of off, right? Thrown off a little bit. A little bit, right yes. <clears throat> Questioning yourself. Yeah, definitely. And what you're, what you're, where you are in this world, because in the end, we're all one. According yeah. to science. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Very true. Well, I, can you speak a little bit more about that? Because you shared that with me yesterday, and I think that's beautiful, the, his, the, his basis behind the work, that we are all... We are all one. I mean, he, he is a meditator as well. Uh, so when, I mean, when you're a meditator, I'm also a meditator, you reach a moment where you are one, one with the universe. I think that that's his combination. Also, with the science of it, of the quantum physics, um, and then expressing it through art because you're not going. I'm not going to read the quantum physics theory at all. I don't. I won't understand it. But we we will get it through art. It's easier. It's you know. That's it's right. more effective. We can more experience intuitive. it. Yeah. yeah, we can experience exactly. it exactly. Exactly. Do we have any questions for Beatrice from the audience? We'd love to entertain one or two. Where did you go to school? Your English is so perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I was born here in the States by chance, not because I'm from here. I'm from Colombia. Um, and so I learned my English when I was little. And then, and then I went to the American school in Colombia, and then I came back for college, and my parents are kind of a little bit similar, educated. So English has always been part of my life. Thank you. Which is really convenient to be able to, you know. It's wonderful. I think, <laughs> I think speaking it. several languages is sort of Yes, I wish I spoke more. In the world, yes. <laughs> Do you have anyone right. else? Yes, there's a question over there. Um, I jumped in at the middle of your uh, presentation. Um, where else can I see your work? Like so, back in East Coast, maybe? No, no, you can see my work well, first you can see my, the work over at the booth, my booth right there. It's the gray one at the corner, number one. And number two, you can see all of my work on my webpage. And um, I can give you a card at the booth. And, and then she is in Bogota, Colombia. And the name of the gallery is uh, the, the Beatriz Esguera Art. Art. B E A. That explains. Yes, Thank and so you. it's literally, as you exit the door, you'll see the gray booth, it's that one. She does have a wonderful um, representation of artists, doesn't she? Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Any I went to your booth, it's amazing. Who did the Volkswagens? Oh, oh the Volkswagens. Those. Okay, he's <laughs> a Cuban those. Colombian artist. And you know how Cubans always displace? They're always leaving looking for a better country, a better future, a better place to live, right? Looking for opportunity. So he did a series of Volkswagens, which are old cars like you would find in Cuba. And those Volkswagens were originally, uh, there were like 40, and they were all exhibited in one line because they're all leaving. And they're all leaving and they're taking with them the smells and tastes of his home country because when you leave, like Pedro, Reese, when you are displaced, you take with you your life, your smells, your tastes, your culture, your everything with you in the vessel to wherever you're going. So yes, you know who we didn't discuss? Teresa. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. let's go back to Teresa. Yes, yes. Thank so you there so is much. An, there yes. is a, uh, an artwork over there uh, it's all drawing and it's cut out. And her name is Teresa Correa. And uh, what she creates are these um, very surrealist worlds. She is a draftswoman. She cuts out every single drawing and then assembles them into these amazing worlds. The work that we have exhibited here is really interesting because not the one on the screen, but the one back there. 
this one, because she went in 2020 to do a residency in Japan. She's done it several times. And this has a very oriental touch to it. So comes COVID and she's trapped in Japan. Trapped with no money. <gasps> okay, wow. what does she do? Yeah, so she had to, during this whole time, which was a year and a half, she had to learn how to live in Japan with no money and she had to face her fears. In Japan, you have these characters called yokai and the yokai live in houses and they will do little mischievous things. So she had to face her own yokai, her own monsters, in, in order to be able to survive this situation. This artwork is this girl facing this monster who's in the house. Um, it's beautifully done, but that's what she's doing. And in the end, it was the best experience of her life. Often that's the case, the real challenging yes. thing. It was but the challenge. She became famous in the town. She went to live in a town because, of course, the big city was too expensive. And she became famous mm -hmm. because she would exchange drawings for rent or for food. Oh, fantastic. And the mayor took notice, and they got an article in the paper. <laughs> and she also um, ended up painting the community center of that town. Oh. No, they be she, she and her friend, which is also an artist, they became famous in the town. That's it's a great experience. Story. <laughs> Talk a little bit about this one. That, this is a very on the screen now. whimsical, yeah. this is one of her world surreals. It's called Fiction in Green Bathroom. It's a bathroom, but it's her version of a bathroom. Mm -hmm. So you have all these strange characters and monsters, and you have a cow, a headless cow, is, she, is it headless? Yes, and you have yes. this bather with a, with a uh, shell Ellen. on top. I mean, it's, it's a, you can spend time there looking at her worlds because they are fascinating with all the detail and all the, 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 the surrealist things that she puts in them. It, they're wonderful. The, the little diver up on the top corner. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's, it's ready to dive into the... And there's a lot of humor, of course, in them. Yeah, well, they're, again, beautifully done. Thank you, thank so you. So unique. Was this also done in Japan? No, no, this was done before. The, the, all the, the Japanese series that she did always has a figure and a monster. But the monster is beautiful. I mean, the monster could be anything, and it's her creation of a monster. And these are the little fiends or gremlins. Yeah, the, the little yokai. But, but I mean, it, she paints her monsters. Wow. And she makes these monsters with flowers. And I mean, it could be anything. It could be a dragon with the head of a cow. I don't know. <laughs> Very interesting. And she's yes. also in Colombia now. She's also in Colombia. Is she living yes. in Bogota? She lives in Bogota and she works permanently. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's, the, all these artists also are wonderful people. And I love them all. Right. Because they are just smart, good, talented, wonderful artists. Yes. How exciting. You wonderful. Know, it, it, and one of the things is we we've, um, have spoken about the voice of the artist, that how um, artists are able to share in a way that um, we can sometimes access things we may not otherwise. But also as a gallerist, you also have a voice. And clearly with the way that you are working with the Colombian artists and bringing them to art fairs around the world, um, how do you, you know, tell us a little bit about how you see your, your place, what, what you're able to do, the difference you're able to make. Well, the difference I, I look to make, and I think the difference that all the Colombian galleries do, we're, we're all ambassadors to our country, is to bring Colombia, to bring the good face of Colombia to the world. I mean, we've had complicated times with not such a good face. But Colombia is more, uh, more the good than not the good. And art is one of those wonderful things that we have to show the world. Like Pedro, let's take in our vessel the gold of this country. And one of those things is art. Yes. It's wonderful. And, and the scene, the art scene before in Colombia was very much underground, was it not? It, was, it, was, it wasn't as active as it is today. It's fascinating. Uh, unfortunately, COVID hit and, you know, and yeah. we've been like, like the rest of the world. But yeah. 
there is so much going on and so much creativity and so many voices speaking of so many things that happen in that country that when you go, we have an art fair called Art Bow. It's done in October in Bogota. When you go to Art Bow uh, and there are other fairs at the same time, it's just fascinating to see the, the, the so many expressions and so many ways to 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 bring out the different ideas that it's just you're all invited to come. Mm -hmm. Please come. Look it up and on when the is internet. It? When is our book? It's in October, okay. usually. <laughs> okay. Plenty of time to make that plan. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. It's oh, wonderful. And then the people. Colombian people are wonderful. They are so nice. Mm -hmm. They are so welcoming and warm that you'll love them. <laughs> Very good. Do, do we have any other questions for Beatriz? Well, please go and um, take a look at her booth afterwards to get a deeper dive into the, um, the works that she's sharing and, um, and enjoy the rest of the fair. Thank you, Mary Linda, you. Consuelo, everybody. Thank you, Thank you for listening. Thank you for, for watching this wonderful show that Mary Linda and Consuelo have put together with City. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's been a Thanks, pleasure. everyone. <laughs>